Let's talk about something I don't think either one of us was expecting. Uh, maybe you were expecting. Uh, you may be the only person who was expecting it. Um, 3,584 CUDA cores of lust, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, GP102 based Titan X. Um, this is a beast. If you are the person that is using the app that uses all the CUDA cores and your business depends on you uh, doing more stuff faster, uh, this is the GPU you've been dreaming of. I am shocked, actually. Uh, maybe that's the word I'm looking for here. That it's a mere one thousand two hundred dollars, given that the <laughs> Titan X with the GM two hundred GPU uh, and three thousand and seventy two cores uh, is a thousand dollars. Sixteen nanometer process, eleven billion transistors. I want to say that one more time: eleven billion transistors. Uh, peak compute of eleven teraflops. That is a huge bump up from the Titan X, which is 6.14 teraflops. It is a significant jump up from the GTX 1080, which is running 8.2 teraflops for half the price. Um, sure. You know, and a thousand less CUDA cores. Uh, 1,417 megahertz uh, clock speed, 224 texture units, 12 gigabytes of memory. This card is a beast. Like 480 gigabytes per second of of memory bandwidth and yes kids in case you were looking for the excuse to buy that thousand watt power supply you've just been avoiding for oh so long like the gtx 1080 oh wait like the gtx 980 ti it's running a 250 watt tdp man yeah this is a it's, serious card <laughs> it is it's and it's a really interesting card in a whole lot of uh unique ways right both in terms of its timing of release uh, the the way it was done, Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA, just kind of showed up at an AI meetup at Stanford, right? Like uh -huh. it wasn't at an NVIDIA event or anything like that. He just showed up in his leather jacket and announced it. And then NVIDIA's, you know, PR team sent out emails to the media and whatnot. Um, it's a, uh, it's an interesting card for a couple of other reasons too, right? Like, um, so it's a new GPU. It's GP102. It is a different chip than we've seen before in any other product. It's not the same chip that the GTX 1080 is based on. It's not the same chip that we saw announced uh, way back in May, maybe uh, before that, where uh, they announced the GP100 inside the P100 processor, which is one that had HBM2 in it. Um, this is different than that even, right? Because this is, what's interesting right. is that it's, it's nearly the same amount of CUDA cores as that, uh, enormous kind of, you know, uh, uh, enterprise only product. I think that one had 3,840. This has 3,584, but those use HPM2. This uses GDDR5 X memory. So a, uh, a new memory interface, but very much similar, you know, very similar to what we have, uh, in other graphics cards today, you know, the 1080, the 107 or the 1080 uses G, uh, GDDR5 X already as well. Um, it's still, you know, it's got 12 gigs of memory. It's running at the same 10 gigahertz clock speed. Uh, you do get 480 gigabytes of total memory bandwidth, gigabytes per second, uh, which is actually pretty close to the memory throughput you got on the on the R9 Fury X, which was the first generation HBM part. It was rated at 512 gigabytes per second. So this card is getting close to that with, you know, modified existing technology, more or less. Um, the 250 watt TDP is kind of in line with other high-end parts, uh, like the previous Titan X. The, the, even the naming of it's kind of odd, right? It's just called Titan X, um, which was already a product. Uh, the, the, the Titan X was released as a Maxwell part based on GM200, that GPU. And now this Titan X, Titan X is a completely new architecture, a completely new process. Uh, everything about it is new except the name, which... You know, they, why didn't they go with Titan P or Titan XP or something else to kind of differentiate it rather than going the Apple route of the new iPad, the new Titan X? Um, it's it's a little bit odd there. The $1,200 price tag is good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. the, the There's a strong argument to be made that NVIDIA with the Pascal generation and kind of with the Maxwell generation has kind of been creeping up on prices across the board. Um, the previous Titan X launched at $999. Uh, right. This one is launching at $1,200. Even though the GPU itself, like the physical die space, 
uh, of GP102 compared to the old GPU, uh, GM200, is smaller. So even though it's a smaller die, um, you, you're getting uh, more, it, 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 they're, they're charging you more. Now, there, there are issues, it could be yields that are, that are there, just you know, supply and demand issues are there. I, I think they've got very intelligent people at NVIDIA that are in the sales and marketing teams, and they know what they can sell it for. Uh, and they're going to price it accordingly. It's also interesting. It's only going to be sold through NVIDIA.com uh, starting August 2nd, actually, so really soon. But it's not going to be sold uh, through partners. It's, it's it, as far as I know, only going to be sold through NVIDIA.com. And I don't know if that was uh, maybe something of NVIDIA knowing it was going to be a niche part and their partners didn't want to carry it or... Um, you know, they want to be able to control pricing more concretely than they've been able to do, as we do every week on the show. We, we check in on, on uh, nowinstock.net and see what cards are available, and they're, they're still hard to come by. Um, so you would assume if they're only going to be sold through NVIDIA, like you're not going to see the price increases that you see uh, at Newegg or Amazon through third-party resellers and whatnot. Um, now, availability may be difficult to get a hold of, obviously, um, but... Uh, but at least pricing might be controlled somewhat. It's 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 a really beast of a card. Now I will say that Nvidia has told me that they're not uh, they're not sampling this as uh, a gaming card. They're going to focus on the deep learning, uh, GP GPU compute AI side of things initially. <clears throat> so I would expect to see uh, some performance results from that come out on August second or third. But as far as I know. Well, I know all I can say is I know they're not sending me one yet, uh, and I'm not going to send spend twelve hundred dollars to buy one necessarily uh, if they'll if they'll send one out a little bit a little bit later. That the Titan brand is always in this weird spot where they call it a a gaming card. They also call it a deep like a like a GP GPU compute card, but they but they know that that. There, there's, it's going to lean more towards the compute side, right? Because what we have right. to assume now that we know this GPU exists uh, and that the GTX 1080 exists, that somewhere in between will fall the GTX 1080 Ti, right? Or, or whatever right. they decide to call that product. How they differentiate it from Titan X, I don't really know yet. Um, you know, because one of the ways they differentiated before was through memory. You can't really do that here because the 1080 already has 8 gigs. So you have to have 12 gigs on the 1080 Ti. Uh, just because of the way the memory bus is configured. Um, so it, it would just have to be somewhere performance-wise between a Titan X and a GTX 1080. And where would that fall in price? Would that be $899, $999? Uh, it, it wouldn't be $799, right? Uh, because right. their Founders Edition cards are $699 already, the 1080. So you're, think, you're talking at least a two dollars to $300 uh, price jump over where uh, 1080 is.